fans of Palo's podcasts and new viewers, my name is Danny, and I'm an apprentice at Concussions Pain Mental Health Awareness, or CPMHA. It's my first time hosting a podcast, so please bear with me. A little background on me. I'm a rising senior at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, majoring in biopsychology, cognition, and neuroscience, and minoring in community action and social change. I am going to be staying at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor to get a master's of social work and in interpersonal practice in integrated health, mental health, and substance abuse next fall. My dream job is working with athletes and helping integrate mental health into their daily lives. I'm also a crisis counselor at Crisis Text Line, which is a national text line, so people in crisis can text in, which helps me gain insight into crisis management and critical situations. This leads into today's topic for the podcast, coping strategies. Look, it isn't easy to talk about mental health and how people cope with it. Unfortunately, the stigma around mental health is still there. To start out this conversation, I'm going to lead you all through a breathing technique called 54321. I'll talk a little bit more about breathing techniques and 54321 after. So take a deep breath. Name five things you see in the room you are in. I'm going to do it along with you, so here's what it looks like. I see a stuffed bear in the corner. I see the sofa I'm sitting on. I see a bean bag. I see my water bottle. And I see the paper in my hand. Okay, take another deep breath. Name four things you can touch in the room you are in. I can touch the paper and the binder that are on my lap for an exercise later. I can touch my water bottle. I can touch the sofa I'm sitting on and I can touch my headphones. Good job. Deep breath again. Name three things you can hear in the room you are in. So I hear my own voice, I hear the air conditioning, and I hear someone upstairs in my house walking. So good job if you're doing this along with me. Another deep breath. Name two things you can smell. If you can't smell anything, name two things you like the smell of. Right now in the room I'm in, there's not really much to smell. So two things I like the smell of are coffee and the ocean. Keep going, one more deep breath. Name one thing you can taste. If you can't taste anything, name one thing you like the taste of. I recently brushed my teeth so I can still kind of taste my toothpaste. It's very minty. So good job, that was five, four, three, two, one. So breathing exercises like five, four, three, two, one are commonly used coping strategies. 54321, I use a lot when I'm feeling overwhelmed or just need the distraction. A lot of people use 54321 during a panic attack to try and help ground them in to come out of the attack. There are tons of videos, meditation techniques, apps, and even gifts for different breathing exercises. People use coping strategies for a variety of reasons. People with mental illnesses are commonly thought of the only ones who need coping skills, but that cannot be farther from the truth. Everyone needs to find a way to get their emotions out and release negative energy. Everyone experiences bad days or experiences something negative. Throughout this podcast, I'll give some examples of coping strategies that I use or ones that my friends and family say benefit them. Just like 5432, one I use, my friends and family use, I walked you through it. Some of these will be interactive, some will more be ideas. So in the words of Elle Woods from Legally Blonde, Exercise gives you endorphins, and endorphins make you happy. Yes, Elle Woods is using this in a murder trial, but I'm using it to talk about coping strategies. Exercise can be a great way to reduce stress and cope with negative mental health. Yes, it is true that exercise releases endorphins. Endorphins are a chemical that are produced by the body to reduce stress and pain. There are tons of people who turn to intensive workouts as their coping strategy, and there are plenty of people who a nice walk outside is enough exercise for a coping strategy. I like to say that coping strategies are like exercise. You have to find the perfect balance that helps you feel good. I'm a naturally creative person. For me, one of my favorite coping strategies when I am struggling is going on a walk with my camera and just capturing the beauty of nature. Photography is definitely an outlet for me. However, my sister loves to paint and draw. I have no ability to draw or paint the way she does. She's incredible. And she can take pictures, but I would say I'm the more talented photographer of the two of us. So that's an example of figuring out what works best for you. Using creativity to get your emotions out is a huge method that lets use, that many use. 
Let's do a creative coping activity right now. Get out a piece of paper. I'm gonna do this with you so you're not alone in trying this. So we're gonna draw five balloons. By the way, I'm not an artist by any means. One, two, three, four, oops, five. You can see my beautiful balloons. So in each of these balloons, write a feeling or something you want to let go of right now. So I'm gonna do this as well. So feel free to pause, get the paper, do this along with me. It sometimes takes time to come up with ideas of what to write in these. So it's like something you want to let go of, something more negative. Um, so I wrote anxious, stressed, frustrated, annoyed, and pain. Um, so when you are done, let the paper, throw the paper in the air. Imagine you're letting balloons go. It might look silly, but sometimes this helps. It's going to fall on my head. Well, look, it's something. By using your creativity and imagination, it can give some physical touch to emotions that are usually intangible. I'm a very visual person, so the idea of seeing balloons and physically throwing the paper in the air helps me. I know it sounds silly to like just do that, but it can help. So some people use journaling or writing as a means of coping. Something I found to be helpful is writing one good thing that happens to me every day. It could be something like I drink really good coffee or I got to see my best friend who I slept an extra hour or I passed an exam. It is completely common to catastrophize and only see the negative in every situation. But by finding one good thing a day, that happens to you can help pull away from that negative mindset. Take a second right now and write one good thing that has happened to you today or in the past week. Again, I'm also doing this with you, so you're not alone. So what happened to me good this week? Oh. So this week, my one good thing is I made chocolate chip banana bread and I got to eat it. So, you know, something as simple as that. You know, it's hard to see the good sometimes when you're having a really bad day. But by doing this, I kept a journal for now it's about two years of just good things that happen. And they are as simple as what I said from passing an exam to just getting to hang out with friends. So for me, one skill I use for self-care frequently is consuming media. The idea of sitting down and getting distracted, whether it's watching YouTube videos, an episode of a TV show, listening to music, reading a book, listening to a podcast, especially after a long shift on the crisis text line or after a long day of classes when I need to de-stress, this is the specific coping skill I turn to. I'm watching Game of Thrones currently, so usually I watch an episode before going to bed. Sometimes I also read a book, a chapter of a book I'm Currently, I'm reading Bruce Springsteen, Board to Run. I use Spotify to listen to music constantly. I'm a huge fan of 70s and 80s classic rock. So that's my go-to playlist. Clearly, you can tell I love Bruce Springsteen by the way I'm reading his book. I've actually also been listening to a podcast recently called Up to Talk. Up to Talk was started by two recent college graduates, one of which is one of my really good friends. And they talk about everything from college drinking pressures to nutrition and a lot of different things. Since it's relatively new, there aren't a lot of episodes. So I find myself looking forward to the next episode. This idea of looking forward and being excited about something in the future itself is a coping strategy. This also goes for an episode of a television show that's on live TV, the idea of looking forward to the next week. There are two coping skills that a lot of people don't recognize as coping skills. Crying and sleeping. Yes, shockingly, crying is actually a good thing. 
Crying is a completely normal human reaction to feeling upset. People have a tendency to think that it is not okay to show emotion at all, let alone cry. However, getting your emotions out in a healthy way, like crying, is actually really helpful. This is something I say to a lot of texters on the crisis line. It is okay to cry. And that validation really helps. Sleeping is also what I like to call the human version of turning it off and on again, like we do with computers. When I'm coming up with a plan before wrapping up with a texter, I always recommend a different coping skill, such as an episode of TV or playing with a pet before going to sleep. Sleep is a great way to help your body reset and feel a little bit better. Since CPMHA does have a focus on sports-related concussions, it only makes sense that I bring up sports. Sports can be a coping skill for some, but it can also be a place where people need to find coping skills to deal with the effects of being an athlete. I'm going to use the example of football. Playing football with friends can be a huge stress reliever and help someone feel better. However, someone who plays football, whether it's at a high school, college, or professional level, may have a significant amount of stress on them. Since football is the thing that puts the stress and pressure on them, they need a different way to cope. This goes for all different activities, like someone who uses art as a coping skill versus someone who is an artist trying to make ends meet. You have to find the perfect perfect balance for yourself, the personal side of what helps release stress and what causes more stress. With the pandemic occurring, a lot of coping strategies have been limited. For example, social interaction is a huge stress reliever for many people. For me, it is. And the quarantine has eliminated face-to-face contact, therefore eliminating many people's main coping mechanism. It can be hard to adapt and find new ways to relieve stress. One aspect of coping skills in general that I wanted to bring up is they are not one size fits all. I keep saying for some people or for many or for myself because not every coping strategy is for every person. This is a huge misconception in the world today. At the end of the day, it matters what works best for you as an individual. On the CPMHA website, there's a list of resources that may help you find a new coping strategy. Take your time and explore different options. If you are in need of immediate help or need to talk to someone, call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-TALK or 1-800-273-8255 or text hello to be to 741741 to be connected to a crisis counselor from Crisis Text Line. Who knows? You might even be connected to me. You won't know. It's all anonymous. But thank you all so much for listening. Please check out our website, cpmha.com our Facebook page, Concussions, Pain, Mental Health Awareness, our Instagrams at CPMHA Awareness, so CPMH Awareness, and at Paolo's Podcast, as well as subscribe to us on YouTube, Concussions, Pain, Mental Health Awareness. Feel free to send other topics and questions to info at CPMHA.com. Have a great day. Take care of yourself. Bye.